crew arrived in their T-38 training aircraft from the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Uh, this is a standard operation for the crew to come in about three days before launch. Uh, their arrival was again at about 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, flying in the lead T-38, of course, is the commander, Andy Allen. And he, uh, flying in the back seat, is uh, one of our uh, astronauts from uh, the uh, Italian space agency, uh, Umberto Guidoni. Pilot Scott Horowitz uh, arrived uh, flying uh, the T-38 and flying in his back seat is mission specialist Jeffrey Hoffman. Claude Nicolier is uh, preparing to make his third trip into space today. Uh, Maurizio Kelly, uh, mission specialist, is making his uh, first trip into space today. We've been kind of busy coming across the Gulf here, but it's a beautiful day to fly, and we look forward uh, to a day like this on Thursday afternoon uh, so we can get back up and uh, go fly again. Uh, this time it'll be on Columbia. The Kennedy Space Center launch team is proceeding with plans to launch the Space Shuttle Columbia. Scheduled for liftoff at 3.18 p.m. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus three hours and holding, and we do have uh, live television of our flight crew on the third floor of the operations checkout building, just departing their suit-up room and making their way toward the elevator, which will take them to the uh, base of the room. Uh, there is a wide range of interest on this mission and its international crew. Uh, workers at Kennedy Space Center, of course, are all anxious to see this one go on time today. And the commander, Andy Allen, has uh, emerged from the building, followed by his pilot, Scott Horowitz, and payload commander, Franklin Chang Diaz, mission specialist, Jeffrey Hoffman, mission specialist, Claude Nicolier, Mauricio Kelly, and payload specialist, Umberto Guidoni. Uh, everything continues to go well as the launch team works to finalize all aspects of preparations for the launch of Space Shuttle Columbia at 3.18 p.m. Eastern Time. At this time, the booster test conductor is verifying that the chamber pressures in the solid rocket motors is at the appropriate levels. Also, air-to-ground voice checks have been completed between the crew and mission managers here in the firing room, and the crew cabin closeouts are about to begin. All checks of the payload's instruments have been completed, and engineers and managers are reporting no technical concerns. Currently at the pad and here in the firing room, all continues to go on schedule for the launch of Space Shuttle Columbia this afternoon at 3.18. At T-minus one hour, 27 minutes and counting, this is Shuttle Launch Control. We are continuing with the count. I copy. CLS is go for orbital access arm retract. The orbiter access arm is now being retracted away from the vehicle. 
This is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the vehicle, and it can be returned to position within seconds if need be. T minus two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. And the gaseous oxygen vent hood is slowly being retracted away from the top of the external tank. We are transferring to orbital internal power at this time. Columbia is now running off its three main onboard fuel cells. Coming up for a go for auto sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Columbia's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we have liftoff of the Space Shuttle Columbia, continuing space research through Tether Satellite Technology. Roger roll, Columbia. Houston now controlling. Columbia rolling on course for a 28.5 degree inclination orbit. Uh, gauge is showing 45% uh, on the left. Roger, stand by. We're still good up there. Okay, Houston, we copy that. It's just our bias on the PC gauge. And Columbia, you're going throttle up. Go at throttle up. Three engines on board now back at full throttle. The crew reporting a errant gauge on board. However, all indications for the engines are that they're operating well. Again, back at full throttle. Altitude now 69,000 feet. Downrange from the launch pad, eight nautical miles. Columbia already traveling 2,000 miles per hour. Flight controllers are standing by. At uh, two minutes after launch, four burnout and jettison of the twin solid rockets. Boost officer confirms a good separation of the twin solid rockets. Columbia now on its second stage main engines. Three main engines again operating well at full throttle. Columbia, performance nominal. Copy, nominal performance. Okay, uh, GC. Roger. Okay, Enco, your commanding is complete, correct? Uh, for now, but we got commands in about five or so. Okay, uh, GC, let's go ahead and save the system. All flight controllers coming around the room for a go, no go per the LCC. Prop, go. GNC, go. Guidance, go. Fido, go. I'll come back to you, GC. DPS, we're go. Payloads, go. Eagle, we're go. Econ, we're go. FAO, go. Enco, go. Max, go. Booster, go. Surgeon, go. Okay, all flight controllers, if you're still go, green, please, on your status lights. GC, let's unsafe the mock. Roger. NTD, Houston flight. Go flight. Yes, sir. The dump data, we just had a chance to look at it. It is the same signature we saw earlier this morning. And with that confirmation, we are go. I copy that. Launch director, NTD. I copy that. Ops manager, you ready? Uh, Jim, we're cleared, and you're cleared to launch. 10. Yeah, let's just go for maintenance and start. Liftoff confirmed. Copy. Here's that 
Columbia. We're on a roll. Flight guidance, we see a good roll. Hello, Copy. command. Roger, roll, Columbia. Booster flight. No flight. Command message. And Houston, our uh, gauge is showing uh, 45 percent on the left. We got good data, flight. Roger, stand by. Copy. Showing left engine at 104. We're showing good outburst. Columbia, we're showing good engine, good commands on all three. Bartling down flight, good good commands on the okay, left. Okay, thank you, Matt. Copy. Miko, Miko confirmed. Copy. Stand by, Fido. Flight Fido, nominal Miko, no arms one required, and I'm go for the photo DTO. Copy and prop. Props go. Raj, Capcom. Columbia, nominal Miko, ohms one not required. DT's up. You have a go for the photo DTO. Good job, guys. Okay, and Blaine, thanks much for everything. Uh, we're happy to be here. I don't know if, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you could see some of the particulate material that was coming out of the payload bay. There was quite a bit of it, um, mostly just little white particles as far as we could tell. Yes, sir, we saw that, Jeff. That's an excellent image you've downlinked. That's just spectacular. What a great Earth Ops attitude you're in. This one's going to go in all the movies. And uh, Houston, the DDCS activation uh, steps two and four are of TSS activation are complete now. Copy, payloads concurs. That's a great view of the glove box. Okay, uh, Dave, uh, yeah, I'm just setting up everything. Uh, lights, uh, you can see the lights right here, and uh, we got the little internal box already connected. Uh, everything uh, looks good, and I've connected the power. I'm just about ready to power the thing up. Let me uh, read you also some filter numbers, which uh, I think you're supposed to write down. Okay, Houston for TSS. Uh, real motor checkout is complete. And I'm sure you see the final outboard temperature is 45.1 rather than greater than 50. But aside from that, everything looks good. And we're ready for the Vernier motor checkout. On board, the crew members are behind in their timeline, just about by two and a half hours or so after they've spent some time attempting to resolve some issues with a computer referred to as SmartFlex. That's a computer that processes data from the tethered satellite system. Apparently, the one of two cores on that satellite failed. It failed automatically over to the second core, and currently the right core of that SmartFlex computer is being used and appears to be operating as expected. That will allow satellite activation to begin for the tethered satellite system. The crew members also have been working with a second unit called the DDCS. That's a dedicated display unit that graphically displays information about the major components of the tethered satellite system. That unit is functioning, however, it is processing data at a very low level due to a low performance level. 
Columbia for TSS. Then you were in the process of reconfiguring uh, for KCA ops. We're going to be uplinking the DDS, DDCS timeline files for your one day late deploy. And I got a procedure to read to someone. Yeah, copy that and stand by one. Okay. Columbia Huntsville uh, for spree yeah. FO1, no response necessary. You have a go for step 10. Columbia Houston, we'd like you to perform a maneuver for SLA Cal at zero 05 hours. Columbia, the set uh, is uh, activated and uh, we're standing by for your uh, action on page 12-4. We copy and we'll be doing that depth reset from the ground shortly. No, we're no constraint to fly away right now. Sounds good. DPS? We're go. Inco? We're go. Okay, Capcom, you're up. Go. Surgeon? Go. KGC, okay, sounds like uh, good work. Let's make sure we stay that way. I understand. Uh, stand by, Maurizio. Columbia, you are go for satellite attitude verification. 3-14. Go ahead, Maurizio. Columbia Houston, you are go to unlatch the satellite. Okay, Dave, uh, welcome aboard and uh, go to unlatch.
Angel. There'll be an attitude at 23. Okay, very good. Uh, I'll do those steps now. In, in two minutes, there'll be an attitude. TNC concurs. Okay. You'll be an attitude in two minutes. There's an echo up here. Now. Columbia, we verify good flyaway attitude. And four Bravo should look right now. Okay, all operators, let's get, don't get too mesmerized by the TV. We are 20 minutes away from flyaway. Let's keep an eye on what's going on. But it does look nice. Go. GNC. We're going. Max. Go. Eagle. Go. Ecom. Go. FAO. Go. Payloads. Go. DPS. Go. Inco. Go. Capcom. Go. Is go for deploy. Columbia, Houston, you are go for release per performance gate 101. Copy, go. And uh, things look fine up here. Things look fine down here, Jeff. Yeah, we will be on. uniform through the handover through okay, Milan. Okay, and we show both sets of thrusters on, and uh, we're looking good. Concur. Thrusters and the APS heaters are both on, looking good. We concur. Thrusters and APS heaters on. about one degree out in the off flight. Everything else is less than one. Okay. If you see the crew starting to chase the libration like that, let give me a blow by blow on Welcome. it. Welcome. Yeah. Booth, we've turned inline one off. We're putting the satellite in yaw hold. There's a slight drift towards the orbiter starboard, and Andy's controlling it. And we copy. We and copy. We see it. Concur. Inline one off. Flight confirmed. Good tensions, Mike.
ABS heater off flight. Copy. Okay, we, we see the uh, tension go way down, but the tether's still going out fine. Uh, very slight lateral oscillations, but uh, it's looking real good. Copy flight. Copy, Jeff. Thank you. Flight GNC. Go ahead. That B10 is configured per the checklist. Copy B10. And Jeff, we're tracking it with the radar, and we do read zero tension. Okay, Dave. Uh, looks like all the tether uh, is outside of the boom and uh, well away from the orbiter. We've got some tether inside the boom. Maybe it looks like about 8 or 10 meters. So it broke inside the boom, it seems. Uh, we've got the brake on, and we don't see any tether movement. It's just laying inside the boom. Copy all, Andy, and stand by. Okay, Andy, and we want to completely verify you have a visual on the satellite, and the tether is moving away from the shuttle, and like some words on that. Okay, well, uh, we had a visual on the satellite up until... Up until we got into darkness here, we'll go ahead and try to pick it back up. But at the time that we had it, uh, all the tether was heading up towards the satellite and it was well away from us. Copy. Dave, it looks like we still have a radar lock, so we could keep that for a little bit, unless you guys are tracking it better than we are. We have an image. Okay, and what you're seeing now, we were using the 350. And confirm, you, you are seeing the picture? Affirmative, Jeff. Good image. Okay, this is taken through the EOS 350 millimeter lens. We were photographing the shape of the tether, and you can see it just starting to go slack now. Unfortunately, in all the excitement, somebody bumped the camera, and we lost it. Okay, uh, and that's the view that we had of it um, as it was drifting away. And we got it for a minute or so before sunset. Yes, sir. Well, those are some tether dynamics we did not want to see. Well, well, we have, we have demonstrated that you can generate a lot of electricity with tether, and uh, unfortunately, we've also demonstrated that you can use tethers to uh, launch a satellite into a much higher orbit. And Fido concurs. That was one of our objectives. Two of our objectives, at least. In fact, uh, we can see it picked up about an 80 foot per second boost. Without using any propellant.
okay, and there the sun was setting. And I guess we lucked out uh, as far as being able to capture some of it before the sun set. Two minutes to the ZOE. Back with you on the west at 2206. Copy. That's a beautiful shot of an amazing piece of equipment. Looks very tasty. Okay. Thanks for all the well wishes. Good 
And Rizzio, this one has a higher flow rate, and I guess that's why we've got more eyes on this one. I see. Okay. And I see you on, uh, you should have this one, two of you. And we're still seeing the displays. Columbia, don't let that thing get loose. gets any bigger, we're going to leave you all up there. Columbia, Houston, we'd like you to perform a maneuver for SLA Cal at zero 05 hours. That's just in a few minutes. Roger, maneuver for SLA Cal, zero 05 hours. We'll do that. And uh, thanks, Maurizio. Uh, we do have live TV uh, into the cabin. Copy. Columbia, we're 1 plus 30 from the ZOE. Back with you at 0641. No response required. We're with you on the mid deck, Franklin. You look real busy. On my mark now. Three, two, one, mark. The ignite is on. Ignite released. Nice flame shooting upwards.
And Columbia Houston, we're two minutes to a teeter cell OS. We'll pick you back up at nine hours, nine minutes. Folks. Hello, Jeff. Hi, Claude. We're looking in the window at you. Amazon uh, River of Brazil, uh, clearly visible with the uh, sun glint off of the water.
environmental systems officer here in Mission Control reporting very good cooling for the orbiter as it uh, passes now uh, down uh, to the final phase of its entry, less than 11 minutes away from touchdown. This view of Columbia from long-range tracking cameras at the Kennedy Space Center showing a very stable vehicle, now five and a half minutes from touchdown. Columbia, we show you on energy approaching the hack. Winds are at 330, 15 gusts to 19. That's pretty much all on the head. And uh, no change to altimeter. Allen about to flare up the orbiter's nose. Landing gear now beginning to be deployed by pilot Scott Horowitz. Main gear touchdown. Horowitz now preparing to deploy the drag chute. Nose gear touchdown. Columbia now rolling out on runway 33 at the Kennedy Space Center to wrap up a six and a half million mile microgravity research mission. Roger, we copy your uh, elation. Welcome back in a great landing, and uh, we'll get you your post landing delta shortly. Houston, Columbia, standing by words, hydraulic load test. Roger. Doc, uh, hydraulic load test not required. On glide slope on center line. Copy. Columbia, show you on glide slope on center line. Roger, Houston, uh, field in sight. Roger, copy field in sight. Ground speed enable auto load release. Copy. Forward. Roger, we copy your uh, elation. Welcome back, Annie. Great landing, and uh, we'll get you your post landing delta shortly. Okay, Max, any immediate post landing deltas? None, flight. Eagle? None. Ecom? None. We'll be going on ammonia real soon here, though. We'll get back with you. Copy that. Okay, no immediate deltas. Uh, Capcom, he's go to pick up with the post landing procedures. Columbia, Houston, uh, no immediate deltas. You have a go to pick up with your post landing procedures, page 5 3. 